leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 10. We all hope that this would never get used. The state set new coronavirus records for cases, deaths, and hospitalizations. Tonight, inside the work to get a field hospital at State Fair Park ready to open tomorrow. The Tavern League is suing state health officials why the organization wants a judge to block the state's 25% capacity limit. Coronavirus hotspots moving from the cities to suburbs and rural areas. 12 News asked doctors why the Fox Valley is seeing a COVID explosion. Wisconsin set records today for the number of new coronavirus cases, deaths and hospitalizations. The numbers show why Wisconsin remains one of the nation's COVID hotspots. 3,279 new cases reported today, beating the record set just five days ago. 34 more people have died, eight more than the previous one day record. And there are now 959 people hospitalized, including 243 patients in intensive care. And the strain on hospitals in the state is why Wisconsin's coronavirus field hospital will open tomorrow at State Fair Park in West Allis. 12 News Caroline Reinwald is there live tonight. And Caroline officials have held off until this week to start letting patients inside. That's right. The alternative care facility here at State Fair Park was only to be used if hospitals were overrun with COVID patients and health officials here in Wisconsin say that's exactly where we're at in some areas. Chris Keene was one of the workers contracted to help build the additional care facility at State Fair Park with the Army Corps of Engineers and medical professionals. At that point, we were working uh, in shifts around the clock, building wall panels. While we were doing this, we all had these conversations. It's like, this is, this is terrible. We all hope that this would never get used. It, if it did, it means people are getting really sick, and a lot of them. That day has now come. Wisconsin hospitals are treating a record 959 patients for COVID, 243 of them in the ICU. State health officials and leaders say some hospitals are overwhelmed. We have to get this virus under control and help flatten the curve to prevent our health care systems from being overwhelmed. As I said last week, over the last month, our hospitalizations have nearly tripled. Video sent to our newsroom from the Department of Administration shows health professionals in the last 24 hours preparing to take in patients at the State Fair Park facility. It's similar to the exclusive look we got back in May. The makeshift hospital has 530 beds. Wednesday morning, they'll be ready to accept as many as 50 people. Keen hopes it knocks some sense into the rest of the state. Wear your masks, social distance. It's not difficult. And Caroline, we've learned that specific COVID patients will be admitted at that facility. That's right. You can't just walk in, Patrick. You have to be referred here by a health care provider. It's also only at the moment going to be used for people who are not as sick as others in the hospital. And Caroline, Caroline Reinwald leading us off tonight at 10. Hospitals in the Fox Valley are seeing significant strains. According to Wisconsin's Department of Health Services, the seven day average of COVID-19 hospitalizations is currently at 121 patients. That's up from just 68 on September 23rd. 12 News Ben Wagner asked experts why they think cases in the Fox Valley are spiking now. Seven months into the pandemic, the Fox Valley and northeastern Wisconsin have taken over as COVID-19 hotspots statewide. How serious of a problem do you think this is right now in the Fox Valley? I think it is a, a very serious situation. Mark Cockley with ThetaCare in Appleton says half of their ICU beds are full with COVID patients. A New York Times analysis shows of the top 20 cities with the most new daily cases, 10 are in Wisconsin and three of the top four, Oshkosh, Appleton and Green Bay are in the northeast part of the state. Why do you think the Fox Valley has kind of become this nationwide hotspot? I think it still is a little bit of a mystery. Why so much now? I know there's been a lot of theories. Well, is it the colleges, is it the football, is it, you know, people getting um, fatigued from COVID? So, you know, they're not doing as well there, but I'm not sure it's really clear on why. Right now, state data shows hospitalization rates are rising faster for our neighbors to the north than in Milwaukee. And the fear is that spike in cases could overwhelm hospitals. Hopefully, uh, we won't continue to go up, but we're preparing for the worst. And but we want to hope for the best. 
Now ben joins us now live tonight. And Ben, we understand you got word tonight from state officials on why they think cases are spiking there now. Right, Joyce. Department of Health officials tell me tonight that the rise in cases in the Fox Valley they believe is no different than the rise in cases they've seen in other parts of the state. A DHS official told me, quote, this has been a long haul for a lot of people. Pandemic fatigue has set in and people have let their guard down. Joyce. I've been Wagner reporting live. Patrick. The Tavern League of Wisconsin is suing state health officials over the order limiting restaurant, bar, and store capacity to 25%. The organization is asking a Sawyer County judge to block the limit. The Tavern League says restaurants, taverns, bars, and supper clubs cannot survive a reduction of 75% of their customers. The lawsuit accuses health officials of violating the state Supreme Court order that ended a stay-at-home order in May. Governor Tony Evers' office responded tonight saying, in part, our order is consistent with the Wisconsin Supreme Court's ruling earlier this year, and we continue to ask everyone to do their part to prevent the spread of this virus. The city of Milwaukee is keeping its own capacity plan for bars and restaurants. 12 News' Matt Smith is live downtown tonight. Matt, the governor first told you that he may challenge the city. Yeah, Patrick, and tonight the city is not budging, reaffirming its commitment today to its own plan that could exceed the governor's 25% capacity. All this tonight, though, with a new warning from the mayor for bars. Tonight, uncertainty in Milwaukee. The city bypassing Governor Tony Evers' statewide order to limit capacity to 25% in places like bars, restaurants, and certain stores. We've had conversations with the governor's staff several times over the last week. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett responding Tuesday to the governor's pushback in our interview Sunday on Upfront. Are you going to challenge the city on this? Yeah, we're in discussions about that. Their claim is it's more rigorous than my claim. And uh, Do you believe so that? I, yeah, and, and I no, I, I, I don't see that right now. We feel very confident that the quality aspects of our plan make it a more restrictive plan. Um, and so we're going to continue to, to monitor that. For bars and restaurants with an approved safety plan, capacity limits are waived. But with that today, a new warning as health officials said COVID cases in Milwaukee are rising. I go around the city and I've, I've looked in some of the bars and I've been disturbed at what I see. And I think um, bar owners should be on notice that if we continue to see non-compliance, it's going to have ramifications, not just for their bar, but potentially for all of their bars in the city of Milwaukee. And Matt, you also talked to a number of bar owners today. What are they saying? So to what the mayor said today, listen, they're uneasy tonight. They've approved and sent in a number of these plans with a rigorous list of safety precautions that they have to follow. Some bar owners tonight telling me that if capacity were limited again, it could be the final nail in the coffin. Patrick Matt Smith reporting live in Milwaukee. While cases surge, state leaders still can't agree on how to respond. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says lawmakers approved $75 million earlier this year. The governor could spend on mitigation. He says Governor Tony Evers has not requested that money to be spent. The governor says Speaker Voss and lawmakers have opposed measures he says are much more basic, such as face masks. We can just keep adding money to that pot and continue spending it because we're not doing the, the simple stuff that frankly doesn't cost a hell of a lot. It has never been about masks. It has always been about the power of the governor to use czar-like powers. The governor says he has sent Republican leaders a letter asking to meet with them. Milwaukee's Fire and Police Commission will narrow down its list of police chief finalists before you get to weigh in. Investigative reporter Derek Rose is at police headquarters tonight. And Derek, tonight's meeting is on the heels of a very contentious meeting last week. Yeah, Joyce, a big difference in the tone between last Friday and tonight. Less combative, completely civil, but the public will have to wait before it can start to ask questions of the finalists. Now, this was the key part of the debate tonight. Would the six current finalists have preliminary interviews in private first or public first? The commission voted to wait until it narrows that list, as you mentioned, to three before residents can ask their own questions. I don't mind it being in public. The, pro the process is fine with me. I understand the other commissioners' uh, uh, viewpoints, but as I stated earlier, they've already been in the public. There's a lot of, um, I guess, familiarity 
uh, coming with these candidates before we even get to, sit, to ask one question. The public is going to get their opportunity, and I want them to have their opportunity. I went around since our meeting on Friday. I've talked to lawyers. I've talked to other uh, police people, other professionals. And I've asked them, how many times have you been interviewed in your career? And some of them up to 20 times. How many times have you ever been interviewed in public? I have not received one answer saying that anyone has ever been interviewed in public. So, Derek, did the commissioners outline how they're going to hold the public forum? At this point, no date or format for that public forum. While tonight's vote was split, they all at least agreed the public should be able to weigh in. It's just a matter of when and where. Joyce. We'll stay on it. Derek Rose reporting live. There's a last minute push to allow clerks in Wisconsin to count absentee ballots earlier than Election Day. Current law doesn't allow them to be counted until 7 in the morning on Election Day. State Senator Chris Larson today asked his fellow lawmakers to convene in a special session to change the law and give clerks a head start of a few days. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss supports the idea but calls a special session unlikely. Vice President Mike Pence met about 400 supporters at an outdoor rally in Waukesha today. We're going to keep protecting the vulnerable and saving lives. And while Joe Biden is talking about shutting down our economy, Ooh. under President Donald Trump, we're opening up America again. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's time, President, to heal, heal, to hope. As President, I'll do precisely what I will do. In Florida, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden rallied supporters at a drive-in style event. The former vice president will take questions from voters on Thursday. You'll see it right here on WISN 12. The ABC News Town Hall special airs at 7 o'clock. ABC hosted a similar event with President Trump last month. And we just learned specifics about President Trump's rally this weekend in Wisconsin. His event is Saturday night at 6 o'clock at the airport in Janesville. Quick look at weather now. The wind has died down this evening, but it'll be back tomorrow. Mark, one more mild day before it gets much cooler. Yeah, so you want to take advantage of it. Even with the wind, temperatures will be fairly comfortable. It's kind of nice out there right now with 57 degrees. We had a high today of 72. Not out of the question that we could get back to 70 for tomorrow, but overall, this is a trend we're talking about. Cooler temperatures, rain chances are on the up and up, and maybe even a possibility of snow. We'll have more on that coming up in Weather Watch 12. And still to come, the confirmation clash in Washington. Lawmakers question President Trump's Supreme Court pick on health care, abortion, and the election. Next, how Judge Amy Coney Barrett responded. From when I was two years old, I had a steering wheel in my hand, so I always, I always dreamt of it, uh, but I never thought I would get here this quickly. Then this Franklin teenager is the youngest NASCAR champion. How he's using his platform for good.